This topic may seem different from the usual content on this channel, but we believe you will find it interesting. In this video, we will explore Oliver the Chimpanzee, a primate whose appearance was so human-like that some people mistakenly thought he was the missing evolutionary link between chimpanzees and humans. The term missing link refers to a hypothetical extinct species that would bridge the evolutionary gap between modern humans and their ancestors. Scientists now consider this term outdated because it suggests a linear progression in evolution, implying that one species directly evolves into another. In reality, evolution is a process through which living organisms change over time by inheriting traits. These changes occur across generations and can lead to the emergence of new species. Sadly, Oliver's distinct appearance and characteristics set him apart, making him a media spectacle and freak show. Oliver was reportedly captured in the dense jungles of the Congo as a baby sometime in the 1950s, although there is some debate about how he was actually acquired. In 1970, trainers Frank and Janet Berger took him in as a juvenile, and from the outset, they observed distinctive traits in him that set him apart from typical chimpanzees. Unlike his peers, Oliver displayed remarkable human-like physical and behavioral characteristics, prompting the burghers to question his origins. They speculated that Oliver might not be an ordinary specimen and even entertained the controversial idea that he could potentially be a hybrid of human and chimpanzee, known as a human -Z. Oliver had a flatter facial structure and smaller head compared to his chimpanzee peers. He also had a pronounced nose, a bald head, and lacked the chimpanzee's trademark short white beard and pronounced forward jaw. But perhaps his most unique feature was his propensity to walk upright on two legs, exhibiting bipedal movement rather than the typical knuckle-walking behavior seen in chimpanzees. Although chimpanzees can be trained to walk upright, Oliver naturally walked this way and continued this unusual way of moving until he developed arthritis, which eventually limited his mobility. Oliver also displayed behavioral traits that strongly supported the Burgess theories about his unique disposition. Notably, he seemed to prefer human females over female chimpanzees, which raised questions about the nature of his social and emotional development. Other chimpanzees rejected him as if they knew there was something different about him. In a special interview aired on the Discovery Channel on December 16, 2006, Janet Berger shared her observations about Oliver, revealing that when he reached the age of 16, he began to display signs of attraction toward her. This unexpected development led to a surge of ethical discussions surrounding the complexities of their relationship. Janet also told how Oliver had developed a refined taste for brandy and each evening he would ritualistically pour himself a cup of this alcoholic beverage while donning a smoking jacket. The intriguing possibility that Oliver might be a human Z sparked interest and debate from both the scientific community and the public and he became somewhat of a celebrity. The media speculation around Oliver continued and there were unverified claims that he had 47 chromosomes, one more than humans and one less than chimpanzees. This spurred various theories about his identity, including the ideas that he was a Down syndrome chimp, a new subspecies, or even a hybrid of common chimp and bonobo. Some even proposed that he might be a mini Bigfoot or a product of chimpanzee-human mating, dubbed a human Z. However, eventually due to his growing attraction towards Janet, the Burgers decided to sell Oliver to New York attorney Michael Miller, marking a significant change for the worse in his life. In 1977, Miller gifted Oliver to Ralph Helfer, who was a partner in a small theme park known as Enchanted Village, located in Buena Park, California. This theme park was developed on the site of the now-closed Japanese village and deer park attraction, which had been a popular destination for visitors. There, Oliver was showcased as an oddity of the natural world. 
After the abrupt closure of Enchanted Village, later that same year, Helfer sought to continue exhibiting Oliver in a new venture called Gentle Jungle. This attraction relocated several times in an effort to find a permanent home, but it ultimately ceased operations in 1982. During this period, the Los Angeles Times featured a comprehensive article discussing Oliver's unique characteristics, raising intriguing questions about whether he might represent a missing link in the evolution of primates, or even a newly discovered subspecies of chimpanzee. Following his time in Gentle Jungle, Oliver was transferred to the Wild Animal Training Center in Riverside, California, which was owned by Ken DeCrew, a respected figure in animal training. However, it was reported that DeCrew sold Oliver in 1985, marking another disruption in his life. Not surprisingly, Oliver was becoming increasingly difficult to manage. The last trainer who worked with him, Bill Rivers, encountered challenges due to Oliver's persistent, unwanted affection toward the monkeys at the facility. In 1989, Oliver was acquired by the Buckshire Corporation, a laboratory situated in Pennsylvania that specialized in leasing animals for scientific research and cosmetic testing. During his intake examination, veterinarians observed signs that Oliver had previously been mistreated, suggesting that he had endured inadequate care prior to his arrival at the facility. Although Oliver was never used in experimental procedures himself, at the facility, he was confined to a small, overcrowded cage for the next nine years. This confinement severely restricted his movement and led to significant muscular atrophy, diminishing his physical strength. As a direct result of this lack of exercise and mobility, his limbs trembled, showing the debilitating effects of prolonged neglect and isolation. The situation highlighted the ethical concerns surrounding the treatment of animals in laboratory settings. During his time at the facility, a geneticist from the University of Chicago conducted a thorough analysis of Oliver's DNA, and the findings confirmed that he had the standard 48 chromosomes, characteristic of chimpanzees, effectively refuting earlier claims that he had only 47 chromosomes, a genetic anomaly that would be abnormal for this species. Typically, chimpanzees have 48 chromosomes, while humans have 46. Investigations into Oliver's physical traits, such as his head shape, ear shape, freckles and baldness, showed that these features were similar to those of common chimpanzees. Additionally, genetic testing published in the American Journal of Physical Anthropology found that Oliver's mitochondrial DNA closely matched that of the central chimpanzee subspecies, which lives in places like the Republic of the Congo, Gabon, and other areas in Central Africa. This genetic information clarified Oliver's species and highlighted his connection to a larger natural heritage. In 1996, after receiving compassionate appeals from the animal sanctuary, primarily primates, Sharon Hirsch, the president of Buckshire Corporation, made the significant decision to retire Oliver, and he was relocated to a more suitable environment, where he joined a colony of 13 other chimpanzees at Buckshire. This allowed him to finally experience social interaction and a more natural lifestyle. In 1998, Oliver was transferred to Primarily Primates, a sanctuary established by Wallace Sweat in 1978. By this time, Oliver was old, partially sighted, and suffering from arthritis, which significantly impacted his mobility. He was placed in a large, open-air enclosure located in Bexar County, Texas, providing him with more space than he had previously known. By 2005, Serious legal issues emerged at the sanctuary, and Peter volunteers reported allegations of animal cruelty, claiming the animals were kept in poor conditions. They described the enclosures as barren and unsanitary. Compounding the concerns, the deaths of two research chimpanzees, transferred from Ohio State University, raised questions about the facility's safety protocols and led to a lawsuit seeking better conditions for the chimpanzees. Concerns regarding Oliver's welfare were also raised by Jorge Ortega, and in a formal affidavit, 
he stated that during his visit to PPI, he was alarmed by the condition of Oliver's enclosure, describing it as filthy and too small. Ortega observed that there was a lack of meaningful enrichment materials and noted the absence of food containers, such as a bucket or bowl, which are essential for providing a proper diet. Despite the reports, Oliver remained at primarily primates, while the sanctuary underwent renovations to improve living conditions. The new board expressed ongoing concerns for his well-being and began efforts to enhance the quality of life for all residents. In a significant development, Friends of Animals merged with primarily primates to help restructure management and address past issues. Ultimately, Oliver spent the rest of his life at the newly restructured sanctuary, where thankfully his living conditions were much improved. Oliver spent his final years in the company of a female chimpanzee named Raisin, who was specifically chosen for him to provide companionship. Due to Oliver's advanced age and the many years he spent in a research laboratory, he experienced significant physical challenges, including arthritis, partial blindness, and a diminished ability to interact with the younger, more energetic chimpanzees at the sanctuary. His caregivers frequently shared updates and photographs of Oliver online, reflecting the public's keen interest in his well-being and story. In the final years of his life, Oliver engaged in a variety of enrichment activities aimed at stimulating his mind and senses. One notable event was a festive watermelon smashing party, which received attention in the Friends of Animals online newsletter. Despite being elderly, he had the privilege of accessing outdoor spaces, allowing him to enjoy nature and live the rest of his life in a peaceful, retirement-like setting. Tragically, Oliver passed away quietly in his sleep on June 2nd, 2012, at the age of at least 55, with Raisin by his side. Stephen Rene Tello, the executive director of Primarily Primates, announced that Oliver would be cremated and his ashes would be respectfully scattered across the sanctuary grounds, serving as a lasting tribute to his life and legacy. For over 20 years, Oliver was thought to be a potential transitional species or missing link in the evolutionary chain between apes and humans, generating significant interest and speculation that he might represent a previously unidentified proto-human species. However, this assumption was fundamentally flawed for several reasons. First, it is crucial to recognize that all species are transitional. Thus, the concept of a missing link is inherently misleading. The fossil record does not allow us to clearly define the exact moment when a parent species ceases to exist as it was and begins to evolve into a completely new species. For example, an offspring of a chimpanzee will always be a chimpanzee. It takes an extensive timescale to observe the gradual changes that occur across generations. Furthermore, even if Oliver were indeed a new species of chimpanzee, it would not mean that his lineage would evolve into a form that resembles humans. Evolution does not follow a linear path. We cannot create a new type of monkey from humans. Evolutionary progression is far more complex and does not conform to a simplistic model of transformation. But one of the most concerning aspects of Oliver's story is that from the time he was stolen from his family until he was accurately classified in 1996, he was subjected to exploitative practices and mistreatment, something no wild animal should have to endure. Rather than being treated with the dignity and compassion he deserved, Oliver was reduced to a sideshow attraction, and his experience serves as a poignant reminder that our pursuit of scientific understanding should never come at the expense of the welfare of living creatures. Ultimately, poor Oliver did not represent a crucial evolutionary link between humans and chimpanzees. He was just different and stood out as an extraordinary and atypical specimen of his species for which he paid a high price.